Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Winter Das Jasinger, and uh, me and my colleague uh, Praminda Jayavatra will be uh, talking to you today about the API Micro Gateway 3.1. So if you just look at what the uh, uh, what features are available with this release, uh, so you've got uh, gRPC support, uh, which brings uh, high performance communication to the microservice world. And at the same time, we've got uh, observability uh, uh, improvements uh, with this release uh, with better logging, uh, metrics, and distributed tracing support. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, uh, support for uh, multiple IDPs, uh, which will act as JWG issuers uh, for a given uh, micro gateway instance. And at the same time, we've also got uh, support for uh, uh, being able to share ballerina, ballerina modules via the policy hub, which can be used for message transformations. Uh, so uh, in previous releases, we've supported uh, uh, being able to write ballerina interceptors. Uh, but from this release onwards, we also have the support for uh, writing Java interceptors. Um, we also uh, are able to integrate with uh, uh, external OAuth 2 servers. So uh, now any uh, OAuth 2 server that implements the introspection endpoint can be integrated uh, with the micro gateway in order to uh, uh, do uh, authentication. So um, we've also got uh, being able, the ability to be able to combine transport level and application level security. So for example, being able to use mutual SSL and uh, uh, access token based security at the same time or in combination uh, with a given gateway, uh, with a given uh, uh, API deployed on the gateway. And uh, this release also introduces API key authentication. Uh, and to support that, uh, we also have the ability to, we also have an endpoint for issuing API keys on the micro gateway. Uh, now I'm going to hand over to my uh, colleague uh, Praminda to uh, uh, continue this presentation. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Praminda Jayavardhan from uh, WSO2 API Manager Team. So out of the features, uh, uh, new features that uh, Wind uh, mentioned earlier, we will discuss few main uh, features in a uh, little bit more details. So uh, in 310 release, we have introduced the support for gRPC APIs. Uh, gRPC is a high performance RPC framework that is implemented by uh, Google. Uh, so we have uh, done a complete, uh, very specific webinar previously on this topic. So we will not go into deep details on this topic uh, in this webinar. <coughs> So uh, similar to our uh, REST API approach, uh, in there we are using uh, the SAGA file as the single source of truth, where you define the API definition for the micro gateway. So in here with the gRPC APIs, we uh, use the protobuf file, uh, the gRPC API definition, and uh, add few uh, uh, custom extensions uh, basically options, gRPC options into that file to define the micro gateway API for the gRPC backend service. So with those extensions, you can basically define your production endpoint and authentication schemes. Uh, if you want to add the authorizations with the scopes, that is also possible. And also rate limiting extensions also available. <clears throat> so if we look at how we will uh, do the authentication part with the gRPC protobuf file. Uh, this is a simple example. So in here, you provide, uh, you have a greeting service and RPC call uh, saying say hello. So you uh, provide this option, WSO2 production endpoints and provide your URL. That is how you provide your uh, backend gRPC service. And here we define WSO2 security options, enabling JWT and basic authentication on top of this service. So JWT O2 basic and API key securities are available uh, for you to select. 
and for the authorization if you want to add the scopes uh, based authorization for your service the micro gateway api uh, then you have to define wso2 scope option and add the scopes you need to uh, provide for this uh, uh, that is again uh, uh, per resource uh, per rpc call uh, configuration uh, for throttling you can uh, do define throttling uh, configuration uh, in both service level and resource levels so if you define a, a throttling tier like this uh, option w0 throttling tier and your throttling policy name so that will affect uh, this is defined in the service level defined as a service level configuration this will affect the whole uh, set of uh, rpc methods you have in this service and if and if you do define means it is it inside the uh, rpc method it will only the this uh, specific throttling policy will affect only your rp this uh, throttled say hello rpc method <clears throat> so the next uh, uh, main feature we are going to discuss is the observability so uh, observability is uh, quite essential uh, term in uh, the microservices as well because uh, microservices are highly scaled and distributed architect architectures so when you have some issue uh, performance issue maybe and there it is very hard to understand the issue and debug the issue uh, in a highly scaled environment so that's uh, why you need a way to monitor your uh, environment so observability resolve uh, that uh, <clears throat> concern to some level so uh, there are three pillars of observability logging metrics and tracing so logging is already there or was already there in uh, uh, almost all of our previous releases so we introduce metrics and distributed tracing in 310 release so for metrics collection we uh, we use prometheus and you can use grafana uh, dashboard uh, to visualize those data collected by prometheus and uh, for tracing we support uh, we basically implement open tracing uh, <coughs> standard so any uh, client who can uh, any server who can uh, use open tracing uh, data to uh, provide visualizations like jaga and sikkin uh, you will be able to uh, use that in your environment <coughs> uh, for distributed tracing uh, and the next uh, major uh, feature we are going to discuss is the ability to write interceptors with java so previously we had the support for intercepting request and doing modifications to the request uh, responses and doing various things before and after a request receive uh, a request was received by the micro gateway and uh, the request is going back to the client as a response so uh, now the, the earlier this support was only there with ballerina language However, with uh, 310 release, we have added the support uh, for Java. So you can write the interceptors using Java. <coughs> uh, yeah, so interceptors are basically, micro gate interceptors are basically used for modifying, uh, doing any kind of mediations before and after uh, request reach, uh, before request reach uh, to the backend and before a response read to the client so you can uh, add any logic you need uh, using interceptors so, uh, and again right now you can uh, write these uh, interceptors using both java and ballerina language uh, so how we how we are going to implement uh, and add one of these java interceptors is that uh, we have provided a, a maven dependency so maven dependency means it it's basically a jar so dependency jar you have to add that into a java project and implement this uh, OWS to micro get interceptor interceptor interface in there you will uh, in this with this dependency you will get some uh, utility uh, classes and methods and this interceptor interface so you have to inter uh, implement that and provide your logic uh, using the utilities that we have provided 
that's how you will uh, implement uh, Java interceptor. We will uh, uh, take a look into this later with, uh, when we are doing the demo on this feature. So now uh, I will hand over to uh, Uvindra to move on with the next features. Thank you, Praminder. Uh, so next we're going to look at the policy hub. Uh, so message mediation and transformation uh, are very important parts of a uh, API gateway. And so the policy hub is uh, a way of uh, sharing uh, this uh, message transformation logic uh, among developers. So if you just let's just quickly take a look at this uh, at the policy hub. Uh, so um, so as you can see, there's a there are many modules that have already been written uh, in Ballerina that are available here, and uh, you can search for many more modules as well. And uh, we're going to be demonstrating the use of uh, one of these uh, uh, modules in the demo later on. Uh, so it's a very useful feature, allowing you to uh, uh, reuse logic and make use of uh, uh, other people's contributions as well. Uh, so as uh, so the key part about the uh, uh, how you can en actually engage one of these modules is to uh, being able to is to actually uh, being able to insert the module by using these uh, particular uh, swagger uh, extensions so you uh, you're able to actually put these swagger extensions in the open api specification of your api and uh, when the project is built, uh, uh, the micro gateway will wire in those uh, ballerina modules into your project. So we'll be looking at this later on as well. Next up, we've got uh, uh, support for uh, multiple JWT issuers. So uh, often in organizations, uh, you uh, have seen a scenarios where there are different kinds of uh, auth servers uh, that are being used uh, due to various reasons uh, and uh, uh, within an organization itself. And so you might actually need to actually integrate with multiple uh, authorization servers. Uh, uh, and uh, so the ability to be able to uh, work with uh, uh, multiple auth servers is, uh, is a really good one to have and so that support is what we have introduced in uh, micro gateway 3.1 and so uh, it supports uh, the ability to have multiple GWT issuers and we'll be taking a look at uh, that um, as well uh, in the demo. So now uh, I'm just going to hand over to my colleague uh, Praminder uh, as we go through the demo with you. Uh, so for the demo we will uh, consider this scenario <clears throat> Let's say in our organization, organization, we have a pet store service. We will take the pet store sample API. So in our organization, we have pet store service. We have used this internally for the moment. And right now we are trying to expose this service to outside. And we have a need of an API gateway to protect and rate limit and do all of those kind of uh, additional features on top of this service. So for that, we have been given, we have two teams. Um, uh, I will act as the team X and Windra will act as the team Y. So uh, <clears throat> we have been given with different tasks. So in team X, I have the task to uh, evaluate the gateway's ability to proxy uh, gRPC services and implement uh, the gateway features uh, for required for uh, pet store service. Basically, I need to implement a micro gateway uh, fronting the pet store service and that service need to be protected with our protocol. Right now, we don't have any uh, kind of a, uh, security implemented on the basic uh, pet store service. And also, at uh, this uh, runtime, this environment, the gateway environment should support uh, providing us the metrics and distributed uh, tracing data. And uh, there is when, uh, one more very specific concern. Uh, we have 
uh, one post resource in our pet store service and that post resource is already uh, protected with an API key or similar uh, uh, method. So when someone send and request to this resource, if that header, the specific header that we are expecting the client key is not available in that request, we don't want the request to read the pet store service. The gateway should handle that and send back a response to the client, uh, 400 bad request respond to the client. So that is the scenario that we are going to implement now. So first of all, we will look at the uh, gateway's ability to uh, 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 expose my uh, uh, gRPC APIs. So uh, let me first uh, show you my deployment. So I have uh, extracted my toolkit uh, distribution here and my runtime uh, distribution here. I have renamed for uh, this distribution to make it easier for me. So I will add uh, toolkit and runtime beans to my path variables. And then uh, so for this, uh, to implement this scenario, we are going to use this repository. Uh, I have cloned this repository uh, here. So in this repository, I will initiate a new micro gateway project called hello grpc. Okay, my project is initialized. Now I'm going to use this uh, protocol, uh, very simple uh, hello world protocol, which I have the service and the gRPC client available with me. So in here, I'm going to define, first of all, I'm going to define the import, uh, which uh, makes the WSO2 specific gRPC extension available. And then I'm going to define my production endpoint, which is, uh, 500 run, uh, running on uh, 551 port. <clears throat> and then I'm going to define API key security for this API. I'll save this file. Uh, this is the file. I'll copy that and add that into grpc. Uh, this is my, this is the project we initialized. So I'm going to add that into grpc definitions. Uh, inside the directory. So now uh, we have a configured uh, grpc API with the micro gateway. I'm going to build the project now. So while it is being built, I will prepare my uh, service. So my gRPC backend service is running now in uh, port 551.
Looks like it's not building. Let's try again. Okay, we should not take this much of time. It should build the uh, time and something is wrong. Anyway, uh, for the moment, let's. Uh, just give us a moment. We're just uh, we're just looking into uh, uh, issues. Just bear with us for a moment. Okay. Uh, uh, my colleague Kabir Praminda has just lost connectivity. Uh, so I'll be taking over and uh, doing the next part of the demo. And uh, when he connects back, he'll continue from where he left off. Uh, so uh, just give me a moment and uh, we're gonna, we'll be beginning the next section of the demo shortly. Okay, uh, so, um, Right, so uh, I'm going to be taking over the scenario of, of Team Y. So uh, what should be happening right now is uh, Team X would complete their work and uh, would have committed their work to a Git repo. Uh, and uh, and then, I was, uh, then Team Y is going to pull the completed work from the Git repo and continue the next task at hand. But since uh, Praminda has, uh, was, uh, had to drop off quickly uh, uh, before he completed that, I'm going to be continuing, so it's as if I'm uh, taking over from that point onwards. So the first task that uh, uh, Team Y needs to um, needs to make is to uh, uh, is to actually ensure that the uh, Petsto uh, uh, Petsto uh, uh, API returns XML. So uh, by default, the Petsto API actually returns uh, uh, JSON. So what we need to do is uh, ensure that it it returns uh, XML by default. So to do this, uh, so here's the Petso project that uh, has been completed by Team X. And so now I'm going to actually make use of the uh, um, uh, policy hub to get a, a transformation policy to convert the uh, JSON output to XML. So if you go to the policy hub here, uh, so the particular formatter that we're looking for is right here. Uh, so, so the particular, uh, so as you can see, the, here's the syntax for actually including the formatter. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's a, it's a, uh, 
extension that you add to the open API specification or the swagger file of your API. And so I'm just going to copy this particular one, which is for the response. So this will ensure that my response is actually converted from JSON to XML. So just copy that. And just move over to the pet store uh, project. So navigate to the actual uh, open API specification, which is this. And uh, so this is the old one that I restored. So let me just. So this would be the actual pit store project uh, as it is. So what I need to do is actually uh, add the uh, uh, ballerina uh, formatter here. So I'm going to do it under the pet resource under the. Uh, so underneath the pet resource, I'm going to add this particular extension that I copied from the policy hub and I'm going to save it and I'm going to uh, now that that's saved I'm going to build, rebuild the project Uh, so now the uh, build is in progress. Uh, so now it will, what will happen is that the uh, actual uh, uh, particular formatter will be uh, will be uh, inserted into the distribution by the micro gateway toolkit. Uh, it will be pulled from the uh, uh, the policy hub and uh, it will be included in the distribution and we'll be able to see it in action uh, when it runs. Okay, so now it's uh, creating the uh, target distribution. So as it's building, I'll just take you uh, quickly through uh, uh, what we're going to uh, be seeing. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be invoking the API manager's token API to get an access token and in turn calling the uh, pit store. Uh, and okay, so build is successful. So now we're going to actually uh, start the uh, uh, pet store, uh, deploy the pet store as, uh, in the micro gateway.
All right, so that's uh, up and running now. And uh, so, um, so I've already uh, have an OAuth application uh, registered uh, in uh, API Manager. So I have API Manager up and running, and uh, I'm going to be uh, causing the, calling the token endpoint of API Manager to get a, a JWT access token. Uh, so. Right, so we have the uh, new access token. Uh, so just copying that there. And, uh, it's going to add it into this and we move uh, bits to uh, uh, so it's returning uh, uh, XML as expected so the uh, transformation has taken place uh, default JSON has been converted to uh, response has been converted to XML right so uh, on to the next uh, task that uh, needs to be completed by the uh, uh, by team Y, and that is uh, to uh, the need to support multiple JWT issuers. Uh, so, in order to do this, uh, so I'm just going to go to the uh, micro gateway configuration file. Uh, so, by default, uh, there's on there is uh, a single JWT issuer configured, and uh, by so the default one that's there is the one that's available with the API manager. So you can see the particular issuer and audience uh, values here. And so how this, how it works is that uh, we import the uh, public certificate of the uh, specific uh, uh, JWT issuer and we will be using that uh, public certificate to verify the signature of the JWT that is sent uh, to actually uh, uh, authenticate uh, particular uh, request that has been sent. Uh, so for this particular scenario, I have a second uh, JWT issuer also configured as well. And for this, I'm using Auth0 as the JWT issuer. So as you can see, the uh, values that are there for the issuer and audience are those specified by Auth0. And I've already uh, imported the uh, Auth0 certificate um, into the uh, micro gateway. So if we quickly move to uh, um, the Auth0 dashboard. So I've already uh, configured an application in Auth0 and uh, there's a con uh, it has its own client ID and client secret uh, issued uh, for itself. And so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually use this client ID and client secret to generate an access token from all zero. So this is the particular call uh, that is there. Uh, so as you can see, the call uh, we're going to be calling the uh, uh, authorization, uh, the, the token endpoint of Auth0. This is the URL you can see over here. And the uh, specific client ID and client secret have to be included in the body as specified by uh, Auth0. So I'm going to invoke the token endpoint. And, I'm get, and I get the access token back. Uh, so let's uh, copy this. And so I'm going to use this same uh, uh, access, this new access token that I got uh, to invoke the pet store. So re replace the one that I used previously. And do the invocation. And as you can see, we get a response back as well in this case. So we've demonstrated the use of uh, uh, 
an application that authenticates uh, one application that authenticates against API manager and also another one that uses Auth0 as the uh, identity provider for issuing the uh, JWT access token. Uh, so uh, uh, Praminda is back online, so I'm going to hand over to him for him to continue uh, from where he left off and uh, complete the demo. Uh, hello, Windra. My GoTo meeting just uh, got crashed. Uh, I'm not sure where to till which part you guys heard me. I think we got to the part where um, you. Um, I believe it was uh, uh, before. Yeah, you didn't get. You didn't start on the interceptors yet. So. You were still, I think, doing the uh, the first part. Uh, did you guys see I'm implementing uh, the interceptor? No. Uh, no, I don't. I think I don't think we saw that part. Yeah. Okay. So I think, okay. I think we dropped, you dropped by the time. If, uh, but the last thing we saw, in fact, was the building of the actual where, where the building it got stuck. Where you're building the petro project. That's the last thing we saw actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, Can you make me the presenter? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. It looks like I have uh, I spoke all along. Uh, so. Uh, Uh, so this is the uh, interceptor I, I was trying to implement. Uh, uh, let me just, uh, since I have done the thing uh, earlier, uh, let me just explain what I have done. So I have created the Java project, basic Java project. And in the POM file, I have included the dependency that we talked earlier, <laughs> the micro gateway intercepting uh, dependency. And uh, this is a simple class. Uh, which is implementing the interceptor uh, interface, which is coming from that dependency. And in there, in the intercept request method, I'm uh, implementing this logic to check if I have if the request that is coming in have the XO header or not. So this is that logic. Uh, in there, if the request does not contain contain that header, I'm going to send this missing required header response uh, with the status code 400. And I'm going to respond from here so that uh, client will get the res this response, not the res uh, response that is coming from the backend. And uh, the return false means the micro gateway should not send the request forward the request to the backend. It should return from here the in the request part itself. So I have uh, built this project. Uh, which contains this logic. So I have the jar file. Uh, let me quickly copy that file. So this is my jar file. Uh, earlier when I was speaking, I have already created the pet store project. So I assume that we have created a project called Pets, initialize a project called Pet Store uh, uh, from the micro gateway toolkit. And in there, uh, in the lib directory, we should copy and paste that uh, uh, Java intercept Java file. And after that, uh, just one more thing we need to do to implement the uh, Pet, store pro Pet Store API using micro gateway. Uh, we need to put this swagger file, uh, which is the API definition of the uh, Apex Store service. Uh, so here I have added these two uh, 
XWS to base path extension and the XWS to production endpoint extension uh, to the file. And this is the extension we are going to use to enable uh, our new uh, interceptor. So it says XWS to request interceptor Java colon and my full qualified class name uh, for the uh, interceptor that, that we just implemented. So I'll copy that file and uh, uh, copy that line and uh, put it in here where we have our post request. So this is our post resource. So I will put this uh, uh, interceptor configuration here. Then we can uh, actually I have already built the project. So I got my Java file, uh, pet store Java file. <coughs> uh, I'll run this project. So my gateway is up and running now. Uh, if I try to invoke that pets resource, so I will remove the XO header from this request and try to invoke it. Yeah, it looks like we are, our uh, interceptor is working fine. So it is validating the request header and responding correctly. So let me add that header back. I'll give some dummy value. So now it is going back to the uh, actual backend and coming back with the response. Uh, <clears throat> so now we will move to uh, the observability part of the demo. So my Grafana dashboard and the uh, Jager tracers and the Prometheus is up and running now. <clears throat> so I will log into my Grafana instance at the Prometheus data source. So my Prometheus data source is working now. Uh, then we need to add the Grafana dashboard. Uh, this is the uh, microgate Grafana dashboard published in the Grafana uh, website. So I will copy the URL from there and import it here. Uh, I set my data source. Now we have uh, uh, up and running. Uh, metrics and uh, uh, Grafana dashboard. So in here you can see a uh, different set of data. So this is CPU and memory data. So where you can see all your VM level data uh, if you want to debug something. And then we have uh, so microgate service level configuration. You see, uh, we have the, we did some uh, curl request uh, before moving into this part. So you see the, those requests are showing up in here. Uh, that is uh, micro gateway. Uh, sorry, this is client metrics, and this is again uh, service level uh, micro gateway metrics. And then if we move to the JEG UI, uh, we'll find. This is the trace I am interested in, the Saga Pet Store Tracer. So in here we see uh, the request uh, we sent earlier. <clears throat> so I'll pick one of these uh, requests. Out of these uh, few requests, uh, we see that there is this one request that has taken 1.1 seconds to complete. Let's see why that has happened. So this is uh, the request part of the micro gateway. Uh, so that is fine. That has only taken uh, uh, about 
4 milliseconds and then we see a long line in here which is the uh, request uh, moving forward to the back end so it has taken more than one second so we can conclude that uh, the issue the whatever the issue that uh, it made to take uh, about one second to complete this request it is with the back end uh, or with the network uh, not with our micro gateway uh, yeah so with that uh, we have uh, i have demoed uh, uh, the basic requirement we had uh, in my project uh, for my team and uh, uh, ideally i should have uh, committed these uh, changes to our repository and uh, we should have con continued from there but uh, due to the situation we couldn't uh, do that so anyway uh, i think that concludes the demo uh, and the webinar from our side uh, it's time to take questions from your side <coughs> Uh, so there is this one question asking uh, if we have uh, support for JDK 11. Uh, for the moment, we don't. Uh, uh, we don't specifically uh, promote uh, Java level uh, uh, implementation. Uh, of course, we do have uh, the Java interceptors, but underlying technology is Ballerina. So the the Java layer is uh, hidden from the ballerina, so that uh, we don't have that specific need of upgrading to uh, JDK 11. So when ballerina upgrade, it's uh, uh, ballerina makes the compatibility with uh, JDK 11. We will have the uh, basically have the compatibility with JDK 11. So at the moment, we don't have the compatibility. Uh, so there is one more question as I understood it is asking so right now uh, when uh, Winter did the demo uh, you must have seen that the policy hub is uh, we are using ballerina central as the policy hub I think this question is asking if we can use any other uh, third party repositories or some kind of a thing like that to share the interceptors that is totally fine if you have github or anything else you can uh, implement your logic and push that into uh, your shared location but uh, micro gateway what you will miss is that you can you can't just uh, put that configuration inside the swagger file and expect uh, micro gateway to pull that during the build what will happen is you will have to make that available inside your projects uh, interceptors directory whatever the logic you have implemented the ballerina source files and everything you have to make that available inside your project uh, so uh, there's one question ask, asking to share the files uh, of the demo so uh, the uh, all the resource files that is uh, that we have used in this uh, demo uh, uh, will be available in the uh, repository that we have discussed uh, earlier so that link will be available at the end uh, in the slides and there is one more question asking about the relationship between api manager and micro gateway uh, so both are developed uh, by wso2 they, so they are uh, pretty compatible with each other so you can import and export uh, uh, each other's API definitions between uh, each of these project products. But uh, we don't have a tight com uh, coupling between these two products, uh, saying that uh, uh, it is a, we don't say that it is a requirement to have the API manager up and running to run the micro gateway. So micro gateway is more like a standalone product, separate product it can run it on run it on its own uh, and uh, it doesn't have that life cycle management part which uh, api manager itself provide the publisher and store uis uh, to 
enabling service discovery and everything. So uh, micro gateway is more like a simplified gateway solution. API manager is uh, full scale API management solution. So it, they, those two products are related, but not tightly coupled. Uh, I think that's it from the questions. So uh, these are some uh, useful resources uh, where you can download our product and please join our Slack channel if you have uh, further concerns. Uh, there will be a, uh, in this workspace you will have a micro gateway uh, channel where you can uh, ask your questions. Uh, and this is our repository. Uh, if you would like to, please do contribute. Uh, contributions are welcome. Uh, so all of the resources uh, related to this demo will be available under this repository. Uh, whatever the missing resources, we will be updating the repository very soon. Uh, uh, that's it uh, for this demo. Uh, thank you very much, everyone.